This is Tuesday, December 22nd. It's a daily word. Hi, it's Father Barry. And we continue with our Advent program. And today we'll be studying God's Son, or Jesus is, Bridegroom, another title of our Lord. From Matthew 9 and Ephesians 5. Hello, this is December the 22nd. It's Tuesday in the fourth week of Advent. And let us do our opening prayer. O God, who, seeing the human race fallen into death, will to redeem it by the coming of your only begotten Son, grant we pray that those who confess his incarnation with humble fervor may merit his company as their Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll take the opening reading of the Mass. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah brought Samuel with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood near you here praying to the Lord. I prayed for uh, this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. And she left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A connection of Hannah and Samuel would be Jesus and Mary. Mary prays Hannah's prayer. Her Magnificat is like Hannah's prayer from, from this part of the Bible, from uh, the first, second Samuel. But Hannah had prayed for a child. Her prayer was answered. Now she is giving her child at the temple, which is Shiloh in those days. And, and uh, Samuel's going to be the great prophet of the Lord. And Samuel uh, will be a significant person in the Hebrew covenant story. Jesus, though, will also be offered by, by Mary uh, and Joseph. They know that they have this, the special child, the, the anointed one, the Christ. And so he already is the Lord, but they presented him in the temple uh, when he was just uh, so many days old. Then the whirlwind of going to, to uh, Egypt and then eventually back to Nazareth and they raised this child. And, and they, he's, though he's a carpenter in training, he is a dedicated child to the Lord. And they're just preparing him for when the world will get to, to be introduced to him and know him and receive from him what he has come to do. Now we're gonna go with the title, Jesus as Bride's, Bride's Groom. What does that mean, Bride's Groom? Well, first Jesus referred to himself that way. We give an example like Matthew 9, where they're asking uh, about why Jesus' disciples aren't fasting when John the Baptist did. But Jesus said, well, that's because the bridegroom has come. He said, when you celebrate, as with a wedding, when one's dearest friend is getting married, you don't fast then, do you? The time will come if the bridegroom is taken away from them, then friends and followers will fast. So he's saying that he is the bridegroom that is with them. So this is the first thing, idea of, of Jesus' bridegroom. He's saying that He's come among his people to love them, to propose to them, to be engaged with us, to say, okay, I've laid down my life for you on the cross, my proposal. Will you love me? Will you accept me? Will you follow me? I think uh, 
with Peter later in the last chapter of John's Gospel. Peter's there on the shore of Galilee back home. Jesus asked him, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? So Jesus asked these questions. And it clearly is a proposal. The Lord has proposed to love us into a union, a communion with him. Do we want this? Do we want to be wed into the Lord? I know women can experience maybe this imagery a little better of being wed unto Jesus. But still, the idea is all of us are going to be bride. And he says he is bridegroom. He's going to wed all of us. All of us will be bride to him. He'll be the bridegroom. Yes, Jesus is grand enough to be the bridegroom to everyone. But he has come to the world to make a proposal, an offering of love. And in a sense, he's slipped the engagement ring or ring right around our finger and he said now what's your answer now we go to ephesians 5 another reference for this uh, bridegroom ref, um, bridegroom title and it says uh, be careful how you live ephesians five fifteen. be mindful of your steps don't run around like idiots as the rest of the world does instead walk as the wise make the most of every living and breathing moment because because these are important times. So understand and be confident in God's will. And give thanks to God the Father every day through the name of the Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, for he has done everything for us. And the Spirit makes possible to submit humbly to one another out of respect for the Anointed. So now, in the marriage relationship on earth, but to consider what's being said here in this text also for heaven. Wives, bride of Christ, be uh, submissive, humbly, to the groom out of respect. Wives, that you may know different with your husbands, submit to them as you do to the Lord. For God has given husbands a sacred duty to lead as the anointed leads the church and serves as the head. Okay, you hear that? So Jesus is, is the husband, and he has a sacred duty, and he's lived it out. He's the head. In Ephesians 5.23, it says the church is his body, and he is her savior. So Ephesians 5 is not just about male and female relationships on earth. It is about God and his relationship to us. So it says, verse 24, wives should submit to their husbands respectfully in all things, just as the church yields to the anointed one. We yield to the anointed one because we are the bride. We submit to Christ because he is the head. He is the Lord, right? Husbands, you love your wives deeply, purely, sacrificially, as the, love, the anointed one has for his bride, the church. So Ephesians 5, 25 is really talking about the bridegroom here. We know he gave himself up completely to make her his own, washing her clean of all impurity with water in the powerful presence of his word. He has given himself so that he can present the church as his radiant bride, unstained, unwrinkled, and unblemished, completely free from all impurity, holy and innocence before him. Jesus done everything he can for the bride so that she can enter in relationship with him, the groom. He, the groom, is God, God the Son. So God has had to do stuff on for ourself to be able to wed him. Ephesians 5 shows all that. You know, these, these verses are read at weddings, and it refers to the wedding couple. But behind it all is actually the relationship of bridegroom to us the Christ so husbands should care for their wives as if uh, they care for their own bodies well Jesus does care for us we are his own body verse 30 it says no one ever hates his own body takes care to feed and love it and just as 
The anointed takes care of his church because we are living members of his body. So he sees bridegroom and we are the bride to be his church. This is the mystery of marriage and why it's revealed down to the earth. It rep represents something higher. It says, verse 31, and this is the reason a man leaves his father and his mother and is united with his wife. The two become as one f flesh. This is a great mystery reflected in the scripture. I say that this has to do with the marriage of the anointed one and the church. Okay, so some uh, big mysteries there in Ephesians chapter 5 about bridegroom and Jesus as bridegroom. I think though still it's as basic as this, that God loves us and he wants to take us all into himself. And so we'll all be bride to him. And he loves us this much that he's gone pretty far to make his, his engagement to us. And that's where we are at. We're at the engagement. And are we going to accept or not this, uh, this proposal of our Lord? One of the books in the Bible that shows this bridegroom with his affection for, for his own is the Song of Songs. It's really quite an unusual book and with some surprising things in it, even some uh, love of erotic imagery in it. And the bridegroom is speaking and he says things about his bride that he loves her, that he's attracted to her. And that would be us, believe it or not. Do you ever feel like you're that loved and attracted, attractive to our Lord? Well, he says things like, Your neck is elegant like the Tower of David, perfectly fit stone by stone. Uh, your breasts are like two fawns, twin gazelles, grazing in metal of lilies. As the day breathes its morning breeze and shadows turn and flee, I will go up your myrrh mountain and climb your frankincense hill. You are so beautiful, my love. Come with me, my bride. Come with me. Uh, this is out of Song of Songs, chapter 4. This is bridegroom language here. I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride. I have gathered my myrrh with its natural spices. I have tasted the honeycomb dripping with my honey, and I have drunk my wine and milk together. Eat, friends, drink your fill, be intoxicated with love. When I heard the sound of my love pounding at the door, I said, open to me, my sister, my dearest, my sweetest love, my flawless bluely, a beauty. My, my head is drenched with dew. My hair is soaked with the wetness of the night. I have, she says, I have taken off my robe. Will I ever put it on again? I have washed. My love puts his hands on the latch. My insides began to throb for him. I have opened for my love. Okay, I'll stop right there. It's getting kind of person, getting kind of uh, intimate and real personal. Um, the Lord is speaking very personally to to us, and His attraction to us. Um, this is the bridegroom speaking. Now the bridegroom came into the world as baby Jesus. This is really amazing. And and then the the Lord has uh, revealed himself to us. And, uh, and at the cross, he's pretty much said, I've come into the world to make a proposal to you, a covenant of love. So what is it? Song of Songs, Chapter 6. You are beautiful, my dear, as lovely as Jerusalem, regal. Uh, your eyes overpower me. Your cheeks are rosy and round beneath your veil, like the house of a pomegranate. My love, my perfect love, the one for me. So Jesus is saying some very tender stuff to us. How can we be so pure and, and radiant and lovely as to him? Well, there's a work that God's doing. He came into the world and not only to propose, but to beautify, to make us pure, to make us 
worthy to enter into this relationship, all of us. And so he says, come out into the fields, my love. And we are invited now to come into his love. Beautiful, beautiful stuff.